Diego, the floor is yours. Hello, Frank, and hello, world. This is Diego broadcasting live from my office in Seattle. I am surrounded, as you know, by these walls that I used to nurture my own sense of wonder, but also to share it with others, with you. And today, I actually want to share a post from the world related to my favorite hobby, which is cycling, something I've been doing. This is my bicycle right here, <laughs> since I was a kid. And this is a post that was given to me by a colleague named Steve Clayton. And it's actually a diagram of a peloton. And for those of you who don't know, a peloton is the structure that the cyclists use on the formation that they use when they're running a race. But to show you the actual data around this, let, let's put the image on the screen. Uh, so this was an experiment that I want to share with you done in a university in the Netherlands where they created a 3D model of an actual peloton of cyclists and they run wind with the wind turbines and they measured how much drag each cyclist is taking. So how much resistance of the wind each cyclist needs to, needs to fight uh, so compared to if the, if the rider was riding alone. So as you can see right here in, in the front, the, right, the cyclist that is at the very front is taking 80% of wind drag. That's a lot. Uh, but if you look at a couple cyclists back, back, it's at 35. And you go a little bit back, it's at 18. And you go at the very back of the peloton and it's just 4%, so virtually no wind. So this means that, the, that the, the, the rider at the front is actually making more than 70% the effort, uh, more than, than someone uh, in the middle of the peloton. And this is why races are won and lost by how they manage the peloton. You know, the, the way it works is that it, cycling is a team sport and the teams actually take turns going, switching from the front to the back so they can manage their energy. Sometimes there's a rider that wants to outrun the peloton and they go at the very front, uh, but then the peloton almost always catches up with them, you know. Now, you may ask, why am I bringing this story here, Frank? Yes, <laughs> it relates to Microsoft the tech industry because we are in a world where we need to do radical innovation. Innovation in, in software, but also sometimes innovation in our culture. And when you are leading the charge on transformational work, you are kind of like the cyclist in the front. And if you are leading the charge for a long time, you are actually taking a lot of resistance from the system. Companies have resistance to, to change, just like, just like human beings. Uh, and if you do that for a long time, you can burn out. This is something that actually I experienced. And I learned that you have to design that teamwork to take turns taking on the heat of the, on the resistance and, and leading the charge. Sometimes you even need to actually collaborate with rivals, which is something that, that, that cyclists do in races. Am I making sense so far, Frank? Awesome. <laughs> okay, good. Excellent. So I guess what I want to say to you is there are times to be in the front and lead the charge and take on that drag, that heat, that wind, that resistance. And there are times to go back to the middle of the peloton and coast a little bit so you can recharge energies. You have to manage that and you have to have a team of people that can take turns doing it. And sometimes I see the tech industry collaborating with, right? I see Microsoft collaborating with other big tech companies, normally competitors on things like diversity and inclusion or security or how to how are we dealing with the pandemic things that are for the greater good that go beyond competition so you know check yourself every day and say am i at my best am i fresh can i take on front and keep fighting the good fight or do i need to take a step back and let some of my teammates lead for a while and that's how you win the race uh, I hope that this is a fun story that some of you can relate, and I'm glad to be back. I'll have more for you next time. Wonderful. Thank you. I can definitely relate, so very happy to have you on the show again. See you Excellent. next time. You know, nobody can lead for a long time alone. That's kind of what I want to say, Frank. Like, you cannot lead alone for a long time. You need a team, and you need to take turns leading. In the end, it's the only way to outrun the peloton. Excellent. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you. <laughs>